Yeah, but you don't understand my life, dude. Yeah. I do. <laughs> That's the thing about it. I get that mentality. I once had that mentality that no one understands what the fuck I'm going through. And if you keep that mentality, you're going to stay in the same exact spot that you're in. You're never alone. Everybody's going through shit. So when people get this mentality of like, you don't understand me. You can throw a fucking rock to someone that can understand you if they're willing to break themselves down and stop hiding. A lot of people understand. You gotta change that shit, man. Yeah, but you don't understand my life, David. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's the thing about it. I get that mentality. I once had that mentality that no one understands what the fuck I'm going through. And if you keep that mentality, you're gonna stay in the same exact spot that you're in. You're never alone. Everybody's going through shit. So when people get this mentality of like, you don't understand me. You can throw a fucking rock to someone that can understand you if they're willing to break themselves down and stop hiding. A lot of people understand you. Shalom. Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Waha, Waka, Kodash. Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Baha Shem, coming in the name. Ba means coming in. Ha means the. Sham means name. Waka means holy. Kodash means spirit. Double honors to the elders and the apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone who will well and teach well because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to you, sincere sisters that's listening in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wah. Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much in this lesson, it's going to be titled as Barrier Cross. Be prepared for more increases of temptation. Okay. Barrier Cross. Be prepared. More afflictions. Increase of temptations. Something like that. And, um, you know, a lot of brothers this week, throughout the weeks, have been experiencing different things. You have different uh situations occurring for individuals you know um it's a lot of trials and tribulations out there so you know this is another lesson to uplift brothers and remind them again and we're gonna keep doing these videos to remind you individuals because temptation is one thing to talk about temptation but when you fully experience it yourself it's a whole totally different ball game you know so it's a whole totally different ball game and it's like these afflictions are increasing amongst the brotherhood. And it's really putting brothers in vexation situations. It's really upsetting brothers. It's stressing brothers out. You know, so we're going we to hit these scriptures to, uh, you know, hopefully edify brothers and reach brothers out there. And, um, you know, keep brothers, you know, minds from, from, from stressing out, man. You know, things are going to happen. Things are going to come. But, you know, let's get let's get to this. So I played a video of a particular quote motivation video and um, everyone goes through things. Every single brother that's in the truth is going through something in this earth, whether it's mentally, whether it's physically, whether it's spiritually, financially, whatever it is, you're going through something. Your children, it bills, etc. But we got to learn to give things to the Lord, man. OK. We got to remember to get things to the Lord. And I'm going to do little things a little bit different in this video. Now we're going to read the book of Job. Okay. And listen what Job say. This is to prove that Job was tried. Now usually I will go to Jer uh, Job the first chapter or Job the second chapter. But Job is straight blunt right here. Listen to this. Job 23 and 9. It says on the left hand. It says where he do where he doeth work. He's talking about the Heavenly Father. But I can. It says but I cannot hold. I cannot behold him. It says he hides himself on the right hand, right, that I cannot see him, right? Verse 10, it says, but he knoweth the way that I take when he have tried me. You see that? The Heavenly Father tried Job. He put Job through a lot of situations. Job went through a lot of furnaces of adversities. He went through a lot of trials and tribulations in his lifetime. He dealt with a lot, right? All at one time, though. 
right? It says, I shall come forth as gold. Because Job knew he went through all these things. But what? He was awarded double at the end. He endured through his affirmities. He, he endured through his bruisings. He endured through his afflictions and torments that he went through, right? So the Lord tried Job. Let's look at another individual. This is Genesis 22 and 1. It says, And it came to pass after these things that Yahweh did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. So the Lord tested Ab Father Abraham, right? When he told him to put his son up as a sacrifice and sacrifice his son to test his faith to see if he really served him and he really was a servant of the Lord. And he was going to sacrifice his son Isaac as he was getting ready to do it. The Lord put a lamb out there for him. So the Lord tried Father Abraham. Father Abraham was tried. Job was tried. Yahweh Shai was tried. There's many prophets in the, in the scriptures that was tried. They were tried on their faith. They went through infirmities. Just as much as we are going through them now, they went through it. The apostles and, and the disciples, right? The disciples, the apostles of Yahweh Shai, they went through their own turmoils. They went through their own afflictions. You had individuals that was beheaded in this truth. You had individuals that were stoned to death like Stephen. He was stoned to death. He was put to death. He died in the truth. You have prophets that were put to death, but that was the trying of what? Their faith. They were tried. The Lord will try you in this truth. The Lord will try you in this truth, man. And it's easier said than done, me speaking this in this video. But I'm enduring through my own trials and tribulations. Okay? I'm enduring through them every day, you know? And it's just a, a blessing that the Lord is still keeping me in the same spirit, fully persuaded in my mind, still continually glorifying, you know? You brothers out there aren't the only ones that's experiencing these things. I'm going through them as well. Sirach 2 and 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, right? And let's see what temptation is. Because we talk about temptation all the time. Temptation. The desire to do something, especially something unwise. A thing or course of action that attracts or tempts someone. So the Lord is going to put you through a different trial and tribulation. He's going to test you. He's going to try you. He's going to put you through a particular situation. The Lord is going to try you individually in this truth. He's going to try any one of us, man. We got to be able to bear that cross. And we got to be able to endure. That's the main thing, you know. So rock two and two, it says, set thy heart, meaning mind upright, and constantly endure, right? Let's go into the meaning of endure. What does endure mean, right? Let's see what endure means. Endure. Suffer something painful or difficult patiently. You see that? Let's read that again. Suffer something painful or difficult patiently right remain in existent existence last you see that go through go through undergo a difficult period or experience so you got to endure through your trials and tribulations in this truth off a of camera on camera you're doing these videos but off camera you're experiencing all these things you're experiencing multiple different diverses of temptations man and it's 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 really weighing you down it's, it's even weighing me down but you still gotta what endure through it you still have to teach you still gotta glorify you still gotta continually have a faith praying and believing in the lord man you still gotta because these infirmities are just going to keep increasing the day by the day by the day by the day every day is just going to be a trial tribulation if it doesn't come that day you're going to go through it another time temptations there's no end to temptation and it's going to come you know so rock two and two set thy heart meaning mind upright and constantly endure and make not haste right in the time of trouble so make not haste in the time of trouble don't make rashful decisions right let's look up haste we're going to look into words in this lesson. Haste. Excessive speed or urgency of movement or action or hurry. You see that? Speed. Hastiness, right? Let me see. Hastiness. Speed. Speed. Rapidly of movement or action, right? Swiftness. Swiftness. Lack of delay. Promptness, right? So, you know, you don't want to be making quick rashful decisions right in the time of trouble so you want to be not making a rashful decision because it can make your situation that you think is hard even more difficult so rock two and three cleave on to him cleave on to who yahweh bahashim yahweh shai that's who we're supposed to cleave on to what did the lord tell us right what did the lord tell us let's go to the blue letter 
Because we got to under, we got to understand this. We're reading scriptures. We're bringing scriptures out. But we got to understand this right here, man. I want to get this out. What did the Lord tell us, man? He told us in 1 Peter 5 and 7, right? I'm going to get the... Uh, not interliner. So lucky. I want to get the uh, translation comparison, right? Now, we're going to read the KJV version and we're going to read all the way down. So individuals can understand when you're going through these trials and tribulations, you're dealing with these temptations, you're dealing with these affirmities, these afflictions, these are hardships, your relationships, whatever it is that you're dealing with as an Israelite man and an Israelite woman, you have to give it to the Lord. Read these scriptures that I'm doing in the lesson. Read these scriptures. Apply them when you're dealing with temptation. That's what's going to help you. That's what's going to uplift you. That's what's going to take the burden off of your spirit and, and from being vexed and depressed and all these other things, man. I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. First Peter 5 and 7. Cast all, it says, cast all your care upon him, right? For he cared for you. This is the eight, this is the New King James Version, right? It says, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. The NLT, give all your worries and cares to the Most High, for he cares about you. This is the ASV, casting all your anxiety upon him. Because he cared for you. The DBY. Having, it says having cast all your care upon him. For he cares about you. The HNV. Casting all your worries on him. Because he cares for you. Right. And we could just keep going down. NIV. Cast all your anxiety on him. Because he cares for you. So you give all your cares and worries and stress onto the Lord. Let the Lord handle that for you. Don't. Make rash decisions. Don't bug out. You know, pray to the Lord. That's just these are just your your demons, and and you got you got even demons that's gonna be messing with you, man. That's why you gotta consistently pray without ceasing and rebuking these spirits, because the Lord will allow the Lord will send Satan to mess with you. The Lord will allow you know demons to even mess with you, and you gotta rebuke them, especially in these flesh, man. They're they're very corrupt, right? So rock two and three, cleave unto him, right, and depart not away. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You see that? So you want to cast all your cares upon the Lord and continually endure to the end. Right? So Rock 2 and 4, it says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. It is easier said than done, man. When you're dealing with trial tribulation, it is vexing. When you're dealing with temptation, it is vexing as hell, man. It, it's, man it, it puts your spirit into a whole different direction. That's why you gotta pray. That's why you gotta you gotta fast. You gotta rebuke these fucking spirits, man. It's a lot of stuff that you gotta deal with off a of camera, but at the same time, you gotta remind yourself to say, "This is bearing my cross." You know, this is that this is that bruising that I have to take. I'm walking in the stead of Yahweh Shai, so I gotta go through this bruising, and it's gonna pay off at the end. You gotta con consistently remind yourself that. You know, so rock two and four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. Take cheerfully. You see that? Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Cheerfully. In a way that delays happiness, that delays happiness or optimism, right? It says, in a way that inspires feeling or happiness, uh, readily and willingly, right? It says, Sirach 2 and 4, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. So you got to just be patient in this truth. You just got to, you know, endure through it and pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to keep you, you know, in the, in the, in the spirit, man. You know, because temptation can have you do a certain situation, a decision that you're going to regret of doing. And then you find yourself in another situation that you could have avoided, you know. So rock two and five, it says, for gold is tried in a fire and an acceptable men in a furnace of adversities. So you're going to go through a lot of different things in this truth. You're going to go through many different things in this truth, man. OK, you're going to go through a lot. You're going to go through hella shit. But it's all it's all of the Lord trying you, man, building you up, man, because what's on the other side is going to be way better than this hell hole here, man. Right. First Corinthians 10 and 13. It says there have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to men. But the most high is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, 
but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. That's why you got to bear your cross because you got to go through your own infirmities. You got to deal with a lot of temptation. You got to deal with shit at work. You got to deal with bills over overly charging bills, you know, inflation of bills. It's crazy you're dealing with the finance demons. You're dealing with hardships of 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 endless arguing in relationships. You're dealing with a lot of different things, different situations. You know, struggling to make it, finances. This is a whole lot of, of stuff. But you gotta bear your cross. That's what makes the whole thing a temptation, a very challenging thing, because you have to you have to bear your cross, man. You know, you have to endure to this to the end, man. These hardships are only gonna get more because we're in the last days we're near the end of this thing man so now the lord is going to send satan and satan is going to mess with us even more on a higher scale because we're near the we're near the end of this thing you know and it's, it don't take much for an individual to fall out of this truth due to those but hey if you fall out then that probably means that you wasn't of the elect to begin with because you got a lot of individuals they'll come into this thing and this temptation shit will get too much for them and they, they wind up falling out but hey even if you fall out of the truth like i said before that's not going to stop temptation from coming you're still going to be going through temptation because you're an israelite and you're under the curses you know first peter 5 and 9 it says whom resisted steadfast in the faith so you're supposed to steadfast in the faith all right you got to steadfast in the faith man okay steadfast right it says marked by firm determination or resolution not shakable steadfast you see that so you gotta you you, you gotta be having the de de determination right so that word steadfast goes into the meaning of determination as we saw it says who resisted steadfast in the faith right knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world then we're gonna get that first peter five and nine too all right first peter five and nine we're gonna get that We're going to get that. First Peter 5 and 9. Let's see what we can get to make it more simpler. Right? This is First Peter 5 and 9. Who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world? The NK New King James Version, right? Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. The NLT version. Stead firm against him, right? And be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers, right? And sisters, which we know that word Christian, it goes into the, uh, the word um, anointed ones. Which that word anointed goes into the Hebrew as Mashiach, which is anointed, which goes to Mashiach Yom. Because that's what we are. We are Mashiach Yom. Mashiach Yom. Which means anointed. We're anointed ones. That's the true meaning of the word Christian there. Because that word Christian goes into the meaning of anointed ones. Alright. Which that word anointed goes into the Hebrew word Mashiach. Okay. The anointed ones. Right. We're anointed. Right. It says that your, brother, your, your Christians. Right. Which are talking about the Israelites. Brothers and sisters all over the world. All over the world are going through the same kind of sufferings you are. You see that? So it's simple. We're all going to go through these same trials and tribulations man. But each and every one of us individually have to bear our own cross through that. You know, James 1 and 2, it says, my brother encountered all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. So you're going to go through many different temptations in this truth. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to just be finances all the time. It doesn't have to be a physical thing all the time. It could be spiritual. You can go to sleep and have paralysis and get stuck in a dream. And you're dealing with a demon sitting on you. That's temptation there. That's temptation on a spiritual level. So you're going to go through different trials and tribulations in this truth. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, that's all trying of your faith, right, worketh patience. And that word patience goes into the Greek word upamani, which means consistency or endurance. So you just got to be consistent in this thing. It's easier said than done. I'm speaking in this video like it's simple. It's not fucking simple. It is, it is a very stressful moment for any individual. Any individual in this truth, temptation is a stressful and vexing moment. It is very vexing. But we know that we got to bear a cross, right? What did the Lord tell Job? When we going through temptation, we got to do this, right? I think it's... uh. Right? Let me see if I can get that out. I 
think it's Job uh, 38. I think it's 38 and it's Job though. Yep, here it is right here. I can't think it's Job 38 and 3, I think. Job 38. I don't know why it's not popping up here. Job 38, it's a lock, yeah. Here it is. Yep. This is Job 38 and 3. Gird up now thy longs like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. So the Lord told him to man up. And we got to man up. When we going through trials and tribulations, or we going through any fucking thing as Israelite men, we got to man up. And you sincere sisters, that's why it's best for you to have a man. Because your husband, if you have a man, he'll help you to be able to get through your trials and tribulations. He's going to be able to help uplift you when you're going through your with your with your trials and tribulations. Because when you, you're you the weaker vessel. An uh, Israelite man can be able to endure. Through those trials and tribulations. Better than you. Because you're the weaker vessel. You Israelite women out there. You can't handle temptation on your own. You guys crack under pressure. An Israelite man is able to do it more sufficiently. Because the Israelite man. The Lord ordained us to be your head. So for you, when you're going through your tribulations. You're supposed to have a man to help you get through those situations. Because you're the weaker vessel. You guys crack way more easier than men do. Way easier. This is Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And that's what we're that's what we're fighting for in this truth. This is why we're enduring through the hardships of our afflictions that we deal with on a daily basis. Because we have a kingdom, an eternal kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. Right? A kingdom that's not going to be taken down. Yahweh Shai is going to be ruling that kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. He's going to be that new Melchizedek, that high priest, right? An everlasting kingdom, never fallen, ever again, ever. So we 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 got to go through these hardships here because the things that's on the other side is going to be way better than here. Here we're suffering, right? We're going through a lot of things. We're experiencing different things. Things is going haywire for us. But hey, at the end, it's going to be double what's given to us. At the end of this, it's going to be way better, man. Way better than you can even imagine. Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the, compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You see that? So that's what we focus on. That's why the scriptures say, set your affections on the things above. All right? Because the things that are due to come, it's going to be beautiful, man. Hebrews 12 and 5, and ye have forgotten the exhortation, right, the encouragement, which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastising of the Lord. You're going to be chastised, chastised in this truth. There's no escaping it. You're going to go through it, and there's never an end to it, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Verse 6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth. Who the Lord loveth, he chastiseth. He's going to put you through different things. And so scourgeth every sum he will receiveth. Verse 7, if ye endure chastising, that's the point. The Lord put you through your own trial tribulation. You have to endure through that. Right? If ye endure chastising, the Most High deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastised not? Right? Verse 8, but if ye be without chastisement, right? Whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. You see that? So if you're not going through nothing, that means the Lord is not dealing with you, right? Verse 9, for more we have heard fathers of our flesh which corrupt, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the fathers of spirits and live? Because we receive corrections of our, we receive correction of our fathers, our earthly fathers. But we're also going to be chastised of the Lord, man. We're going to go through a lot. We're going to be going through different, different things, man. You know, we just gotta, we just gotta bear that cross, man. Hebrews 11 and 37. Now read, listen to this. This is Hebrews 11 and 37. They were stoned, right? You have prophets that were stoned to death. You have prophets like Stephen. He was put to death. You have prophets that were stoned to death, right? They were, they were sawn asunder. They were tempted. You got a lot of brothers getting tempted in this truth. It says they were slain with a sword. You have prophets that was beheaded. 
It says they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. So we go through a lot. You, you get tormented in this truth. You deal with scoffers. You deal with a lot of different things. You deal with bug outs. You deal with people at camp trying to fight you. You deal with a lot of different st shit. You go through a lot of different stuff. You know, as an Israelite man, Israelite woman, you go through a lot of stuff. But that's all of you bearing and enduring through your trials and tribulations, man. Okay. Um, Job 23 and 10, but he knoweth the way that I take when he have tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So Job was rewarded double at the end. He was awarded double at the end. And I want to prove that because we always, always say he was, we always say he was awarded double at the end, right? Let's prove that. Let's go to the last chapter, right? Let me get to the main point. I'm going to go to the main point. Um, let me see. I want to get to the main point. Here it is right here. Let me see. Yep. We're going to start at verse 10. It says, And the Lord turned cap it says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So all the shit that he lost, he lost his children, he lost his cattle, he lost his wealth, he was smitten with bulls, his woman told him to give up on the Lord and die. He was afflicted on a high level, right? Due to him enduring his afflictions, the Lord gave him everything back double. He was rewarded double. Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. And did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemourned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. So the Lord tried Job on a high level. He went through a lot. Right? The Lord allowed Satan to mess with Job. The Lord sent Satan to mess with Job. Job endured all that and he was given double. He was rewarded double for enduring through it. Right? It says all the evil that Job it says all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. It says every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. It says so the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. So he lost all that but the Lord rewarded him double. Right. Like the scriptures say, um, the Lord maketh poor and he maketh rich. Lord maketh rich and he maketh poor. The, the, the Lord will do that. The Lord will have you lose a lot of different things and the Lord can give you double. That's how the Lord works. The Lord works in perfect balance. He was given double. So the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. For he had he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and thousand, it says and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. Verse 13. And he. And he, it says, he had also seven sons and three daughters. Remember, his in the beginning of chapter one, his his children was put to death. The Lord, uh, the, the Lord allowed Satan to to test Job, and Job's children they were put to death. The Lord gave him children again. It says he had also seven sons and three children. Right, verse fourteen, and he called the name of the first Jemima, Jemima, Jemima or Jemima, and the name of the second was Keziah. And the name of the third was Kar Karif Karif Karipapuch. I'm saying it right. Kar Karin Karim Hapuch. Verse 15. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. And after this, after this lived Job a hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons, sons, and even four generations so the lord allowed him to live four generations he got to see his sons his grandsons his great grandsons and his great great grandsons verse 17 so job died being old and full of days so job went through all his trials and tribulations but he was he was rewarded double because he bared his cross he was rewarded double he bared his cross he made it to the end and we're going to end it with this right here this is Luke 9 and 23. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So we got to walk in the stead of Yahweh Shai. We got to walk in that same stead. Yahweh Shai walked through that stead. Yahweh Shai got that bruising. We're going to get that bruising. Job was tried. Father Abraham was tried. Many prophets in the truth were tried. The apostles of Yahweh Shai was tried. We were all tried in this truth. So you got you to gotta go through it. We're coming in the stead of Yahweh Shai. You got to suffer these same afflictions, right? I start at verse 4, Isaiah 53 and 4. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the Most High, and afflicted. And this is talking about Yahweh Shai. 
This is what he went through. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yahweh Shai was bruised. Right? He got that bruising, but it was pleasing to the Lord. He went through his afflictions and trials and tribulations and bared all our sins, bared all our transgressions, right? He was in that bruising. We're coming in that same stead as Yahweh Shai, so we got to go through that same bruising. For, for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So there you go. Yahweh Shai had to go through it. We have to go through it, man. That's the whole point of being an Israelite. Is enduring through your trials and tribulations. Each and every one of us individually have to endure through our own trials and tribulations. The best thing to do, like I said, is to pray to the Lord, read these scriptures, apply them to your spiritual walk, and continually pray without ceasing. It's easier said than done. It is very vexing. It is very irritating. It is, but we got to bear our cross. We're going to be tried, you know, and that's how the Lord sets it up. You know, because what's on the other side is going to be way better than what it is here. The Lord doesn't want us comfortable, man. That's why we, we go through temptation and etc. All right. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. On to the next one. Shalom.